hello. I just want to welcome everybody um, to this group. Uh, it's the Encountering Jesus group. And eventually, uh, I don't know if I'll redo this video, but um, this will also be for when I start the um, Encountering Jesus course. And one of the things that um, I've been uh, trying, always Finley has to come and introduce himself just so you know. Say hello. Say hello. He's looking at the colored pencils. Anyway, um, this, so you'll hear Rico too. He's back there. Let's see if I can get the lighting right again. Uh, creates a place in my heart to continue these um, divine encounters. And one of them is uh, treasuring my times with Jesus. When we don't treasure something or, or have a, a, a great value for it, then we don't uh, we don't spend time, we don't make time, we um, see it as something that is uh, expendable. And so um, I want to teach you about journaling. And it, it's so funny because I'd already been talking to a friend of mine about how I'm, I, you know, I may do some prophetic painting uh, type teaching. So anyway, I have uh, started uh, my journaling today and one of the things that I am seeing is that most of us commune with Jesus uh, at different times through the day um, when we sit to eat we pray when we go for a walk there'll be um, just the centering in and, and focusing on him so I'm gonna recommend that you have journals for all those things because um, there's a different mindset. And so this morning when I was having coffee with Jesus, he began to show me uh, my heart and why I wasn't entering in really deeply with him and enjoying my times with him. And then um, he had me journal it and he gave me the questions to ask each time when I'm having coffee time with him because we also go over um, work related things like what I'm gonna write that day and you know different things so um, and that would be a different journal <laughs> that's a different my little work journal in my you know scheduling and so I wanted to encourage you to have first off a personal journal that's just about and so here's here's mine and it's ask uh, seek and knock and it's that scripture Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and, it, and you will find and knock and the door will be open. And we're going to be talking a lot about doors too, I think, uh, because of the, the Revelations 3.20. So my first day when he showed me how to do this, and this is really the pattern for uh, what we're going to do. So I want to encourage you, go ahead, get your colored pencils. This is going to help you whether you go through my e-course or not. Um, I want to make this first part in um, Encountering Jesus for everybody. It's a public group. Yes, you have to answer questions to get in. and um, But I still want to be releasing stuff for everybody. I, you know, I, it's not about the money for me, but the course will cost like, a, I guess, maybe $10 a month. And um, you get pretty much seven days of content every week. So it's a, it's a full month. And um, so anyhow, um, let's back to the journal. So you've got your colored pencils and this is gonna be a time for you to take what Jesus gives you and um, write it down. So here's what happened with me this morning. So um, he begins to speak to me because I'm not having my time. So every morning I wake up and I'm like, Jesus, I'm not valuing you enough. I'm so busy all the time. And, and yes, I'm doing his work, but I'm also just busy. And I'm, I'm finding things to do that um, just aren't as productive. But that's not his point. His point for me was... Anytime you don't think you're doing enough, you always feel 
guilt and then the unworthiness comes and then you pull away and you don't allow yourself to enjoy and so that's what happened when I was in my heavenly place I noticed Jesus was doing something and I said well, you know what are you doing and he said I'm making caramel taffy for the kids to make caramel apples and I, oh, caramel apples are my favorite and so and he wadded up a little bite and he gave it to me and I couldn't taste it and then he tried again I still couldn't taste it and then he's like well let's put it on a piece of apple and he got a green apple, a, a slice of green apple, and he put it on there and some nuts. And I still couldn't taste it. And I'm like, what is up with this? You know, because I still hadn't figured out what he was showing me. But it, oftentimes, um, Jesus will speak something, and our hearts and minds don't catch it. Because, um, you know, if we're more in our head than our heart, will listen with our intellect and um, we will make assumptions about what we think we hear that is absolutely human nature we saw it with eve <laughs> she was not a bad person we know there was no e sin even before she sinned i mean yes the enemy was there to tempt her but she wouldn't have been temptable <laughs> if that's a word if she had not been willing to do this, of allowing her thoughts to lead instead of her heart. Because in her heart, she would have known that God the Father was the most loving, wonderful person in the universe and she could trust what he said. But at any rate, this is where we are. And so he first spoke to me what he wanted me to understand about my heart and how I was not entering in and that's why I was struggling to have my times with him and, and the guilt just keeps multiplying because every day I don't enter in and really enjoy him and be a part of things then it just makes me feel worse so then he tries to get me to eat the caramel apple and um, I can't taste and now the, now I'm feeling really bad. I'm like, oh, I'm so bad now. And I neglected you so much that I can't even enter into taste. And then that's when he brought it. He, he does this where he is laying like several ways of, of getting you to get it. But see, this, the, um, the illustration of the apple took me past uh, my mind because it was beyond what I could uh, you know I, I was it was beyond um, reasoning and, and um, my typical ways of thinking in my brain and so then my spirit started pondering that and of course that's where the metaphors and the allegories and the symbolism are so um, important to the things in heaven it's almost like he has to kind of hide it until till there's that childlike moment where we're believing him and really taking in what he's saying. And that's when it went, you know, the light bulb, I'm not tasting the sweetness of heaven. I'm not tasting the apple. I'm not tasting his goodness because I'm so worried about missing him and not doing what I'm supposed to do to develop this relationship and the unworthiness comes up so here's my journal and right now I'm going to get um, I like green apples and so I want you to get to the point if you can see this little apple I put a little apple down there and I'm going to color it that's what you're going to use the coloring pencils for and you're going to make yourself a sweet little uh, reminders of what you encountered because that that ability to draw and um, and get into your emotions a little more and connect with um, your heart feelings is where you're going to um, remember when you come back to your journal it's going to be a, 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 a connection with your spirit with the spirit man's ability to, when we go back to our journal and we look at the little apple you don't even have to read all that you wrote that's going to be enough for you to go oh 
That's what you taught me yesterday. And, and it's going to have this way of, of stirring up the memories. So I'm really trying to keep everything under 20, uh, 12 minutes. So I'm going to sign off now. But I wanted to just um, encourage you to go ahead and get that journal and get your color pencils and develop this habit. And this will be something I'll be bringing up week to week and asking you about writing your journals. Here are the questions that you should put in the front of your journal. Um, there they are. And mine were, what did Jesus show me? How did it make me feel? That's question two. And was there something specific I saw or experienced? And that's what you'll draw. And it doesn't matter if it's a stick figure. It doesn't matter how basic. You're, you're being childlike. And that is part of fostering. If you, if you haven't read Heaven's Door, you'll understand this. I mean, if you haven't, then you won't understand it. But Heaven's Door has that very clear. We have to come like a child because when we're born again, our spirit man's like a baby. I go into deep detail on that and uh, biblical understanding of that. But um, so there's where we're at. Now I'm past 12 minutes. Bless you guys. And um, I'll be back. So you guys begin to meet with Jesus. And, and even if it's just a, a something you see in nature or whatever, just go ahead and jot down what you think he's saying. I mean, you know, no, we're not all going to hear perfectly every day or see perfectly. That's my whole point. And um, so anyway, bless you guys and have a great day. And we're going to keep moving forward. And um, I will talk to you later. Bye.